Uh, they like look like they're in pain. And I realize it tastes you. disgusting, but then after a while they don't taste it because they're freaking drunk. I, I'm so glad I just started recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, so today we're doing more trig, but circling back to what we did yesterday, we are going to inverse use trig. the trig oh, functions in the inverse manner to solve for unknown angles. Not slope ratios, but the actual angles and degrees. You should have which them over there so they could see what the uh -huh. horrible math is. Yeah, right. Wait. They they sometimes come in while well, I still have some of it up and they are um, angles? like scared. Are they are they the so so angles? A way, so a way to check the angles is that I'm gonna say angles? again, it doesn't work when we all talk at the same time. As three of you were just talking and yeah. David just kept talking the longest. But okay, <laughs> David, then we'll go one at a time. Oh wait, so like I just had a thing. Like, we're trying to figure out the three angles, and so if we just added them all up, it equals 180. This is what happens when you cut me off in the middle of explaining what we're doing. Okay. Sophia. Okay, I just had a quick question about the, like, mm -hmm. like so is it, like, two, like, pro, like, two, like, problems, like, kind of, like, A, B, or C, or, like, 478 problem? Yeah, like, choose two other problems, like, 78, 79, okay. right, Some, but problems from the homework. Choose things that you feel like you need to work on, so I can't right? So like we talked about yesterday, don't choose things that are just like easy peasy. Whatever. Like, I get it. You don't want to work harder than you need to, but you want to make sure that you can master things. When oh, yeah. Masters. I actually did the ones that we were like learning, not like the problem. <clears throat> yes, so I already know that. So, so already David, the situation we're talking about here with inverse trigonometry is if I were to tell you that we need to make a handicap ramp, like, in a space that is going to go up, and actually, uh, this is a true story, my, uh, a girl that I was dating in high school, her father fell out of a tree while tree trimming, Wait, and we oh, then had trimming. to make, so you cut, you're cutting limbs, and he fell out, oh, and broke oh. his spine, so oh, we, oh. then they needed a handicap ramp up to their front porch, because he couldn't do stairs for a very long time, oh. so if that porch was three feet long, or three feet tall, oh, and a lot of porches are like three feet tall, but their yard was only 12 feet long, oh what would be the slope angle here because according to, uh, I don't know if it's OSHA or just the ADA, but the American with Disabilities Act sets certain standards for things such as you can't have a handicap ramp that's a 45 degree slope because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> so what we have here is helping out Mr. Gow. So Mr. Gow is trying to make this ramp and it must rise three feet to get to that height, and in order to follow state building code, the largest the ramp can open up is 4.76 degrees. Oh, Abu that's set that. Really, that's the biggest angle. Apparently, they had people try to go up ramps enough to a certain angle, and oh, realized really? that is the angle that is no fun. Now, <laughs> unlike the drawing that I just drew, distance out to the street, Mr. Gao has more space, right? He's got 25 feet. So I want you on your paper because this is just like, can we figure it out on our own and then I'll help you with whatever we need. On your papers, go ahead and draw a picture of our situation. Label the angle that we're gonna look for, theta, because obviously there are two angles, like David brought up, but the only one we know right now is gonna be the 90. And then see if you can decide what operation we need to use to figure this out. So actually, I'm just gonna bump back to here in my drawing and use a little bit of that. Now, if we process through that, you would have seen that that is an angle larger than you want to deal with. With the 12 feet that I had put up there. Wait, is it 25? I heard 25. 25 in Mr. Gow's problem. Okay. Sorry, so the, the what I was talking about was like a legitimate situation that happened. Now, their porch wasn't three feet tall, but they didn't have very far before the sidewalk. Um, so sometimes with ramps like that, you'll see they have to turn a 90 degree angle and go one way then go a different way because they don't have a long enough run to make a low enough angle that they have to turn two different directions. I'm saying on the street that I live on, there's a handicap ramp that comes off somebody's back porch, comes down to the sidewalk, and then like comes down again. I've seen some of those and I'll go like... Oh, yeah, that's zigzag. It's because of this slope requirement. So theta here must come in as less than four point, was it six seven or seven six? Seven six. He's okay now. Oh. 
Yeah, don't go falling out of trees and you'll be fine. Yeah, don't go chasing waterfalls either. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. What trig function would be appropriate with that angle being our slope uh, angle? Uh, and the side uh, we have? What's the, the opposite and the and adjacent. adjacent? Is that tan? Tangent. I don't I don't know all of them off the top of my head. So whenever you start doing trig, it would be worth it on your paper to just jot down. Sometimes I'll just do that. Also, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Right? Whatever helps you. Now, you could write out so ka toa like people, <gasps> but I feel like that's less useful than this. So, tangent of theta is the rise over the run. Right? We already figured that out. Now, as we talked about once when I was way over teaching and making you guys pull out your hair, if we don't know what the angle is, we just need to get rid of the thing that's been happening to you, or the thing that so, has been done to the angle. The function of tangent has been done, so we have to divide by tangent, which doesn't really make sense, but division is the inverse of multiplication. So instead, our calculator makes our life easy, and we can just hit a button to do the inverse tangent. Actually, that second parenthesis should be over here. And this should actually have. Oh, I remember that now. So, sorry, I should have put this on the start slide. We need graphing calculators. Oh. And I, you get a calculator. And I, you get a calculator. I'm trying to remember my. Oprah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And she used to do like Oprah's giveaway thing. Yeah. She might still do it. And okay. you get. get and, and you get a KitchenAid. And you get actually KitchenAid's are awesome. It's a thing that aids you in the kitchen. Yeah. It's like, funny how names make sense as you get older. Like, it's funny. Kitchen aid was always something I never thought about. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like an kitchen. aid like window, in the kitchen. Like, like, no, I, I thought it meant like a little robot thing. No, like, like something that helps, like a blender kitchen helps so you don't have to. Kitchen what? Like a little kitchen, kitchen gun. Kitchen gun? Well, wait, do you, do you like shoot potatoes or something? No, you shoot peas. See, I, I was already combining words when I was like four years old. Like, you, you know, there's like, okay, like um, Ikea stools. Or like all the dots on top. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I always called them scroll ups because you you would. That sounds like an them. IKEA name. Yeah. Like IKEA has really funky names for things. It's like in a different language. So if we apply the inverse tangent on one side, we're applying the inverse tangent on both sides. So in our calculator, we are just going to type in second tangent. I gotta turn it on. I'm okay. Put my calculator somewhere. Second tangent is going to get us the inverse of it. But then what do we put for the? the slope ratio that you have because we are seriously just doing the algebra so if you don't have this written down you should like we go from tangent of theta and you could just make it a next step to now inverse tangent of theta wait these wait is there a way to get like when you multiply yeah. something yeah. by its inverse it equals you get one but we don't know. Is there a way to actually get it so, to like be a fraction, or do you just have to do the divided by? Like three divided by is the okay. easiest way. So second tangent should pop up tan with the power of negative one. You hit three divided by twenty-five. You, you might check your mode and make sure that you're in degrees, oh, so it yeah. spits out is degrees. Wait, it's too big. What is it supposed to be? Six point eight. It is supposed to be six point eight four. Well, it's not supposed to be, but that's what it is. Oh, oh no. Oh no, indeed. Oh, no. You're in some like just slides off by a degree. Mr. Gal. Alright, now challenge. No talking. What? He immediately talks. Help Mr. Gal figure out how long his ramp would need to be to meet the requirements. So I'm going to go back to the slide that showed us what was up. 25 feet we just said is not far enough. The angle of 4.76 is what we need. We have to go up by 3 feet. Would it, because it has to be... Oh, it cannot exceed, so... Now let's assume this is the walk up to a school, and there's a lot of space. Right? He has more than 25 feet to work with. That was just his first plan. Uh, 
Leanne, what'd you do? Wait, um, so I replaced Fader with uh, 4.76. Oh. And I did tan 4.76 equals 3 over x. And then uh, I switched the tan and the x. And then I got, and I did the math and I got x equals 36.03. What would that be labeled? 36.03 feet. Feet because this is feet, right? So it's going to take the label of whatever other number we plugged in. Would it make sense that if 25 didn't give us a low enough angle that 36 would? Yeah, because it would have to get bigger, right? You need more run to bring down the angle. Are there any questions here with how we then work it the way that we were, have been doing? If normal porches are three feet up, they got to have a pretty big yard. My porch actually starts closer to my driveway and gets further away because my driveway tapers down. And one of my friends, it was raining and it was dark and he couldn't see and he thought it was only like this far of a step and it was like this far of a step and he totally face planted. So it was, what? As once I knew he was okay, it was fun. We saw it on our doorbell camera. Because <laughs> he texted me the next day, he's like, dude, I totally bit it when I was stepping off your porch. I was like, yeah, you legitimately bit it. You like face planted. He's okay. Seth's a good guy. He's a dad now. Congrats to Seth. I have no idea who he is. It's, it's, we played tennis in high school. He's a friend of mine. So, solve for either A or B. If you want to work as a class, choose which one you want to solve for. A. Wait. It seems like everyone said A. So. The angle. Wait, which one? Oh, angle A. The angle, okay. Okay. Angle, uh, A or B. Uh, do I know? Uh, this is how we're doing. Uh, uh, I guess we'll solve Wait a minute. Because if you solve for A, you know B. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Oh, is it? Hey, A equals. Um, Hold up, okay. No, no, it's not hand. Because. This is hypotenuse. Yeah. The hypotenuse is where the opposite is. But it's always the hypotenuse. That's. Uh, that's cosine. Yeah. 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 It's cosine. No, that's sine. That's sine. No. Wait, if this is hypotenuse, then which one should be adjacent and which one should be opposite? No, it's, it's What it's did we talk about it's with the Jason yesterday? Uh, it's the line that connects with. Oh, shoot. How do you say it? Um, but this one should be adjacent, right? It's next to and touching yeah. Yeah. what? What are we trying to find? The angle, right? The adjacent is next to and touching the angle. So if we're looking at angle A, there are two sides adjacent, but one of them is always the hypotenuse. So this is adjacent to A. B, C would be opposite to A. Meaning, which trig function do we choose here? Cosine. 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 21.04. Wow. wow. He I dies know. at the end. No. You don't have to shout it out before people are okay. done. I think he dies at the end. Have I not made that analogy in here? Yeah. When we, we are have. solving math together, do not just shout out the answer. Okay. It is like when somebody in the movie says, oh, he dies at the end. Don't, don't spoil it. See, I, I spoiled Oh, look, B dies at the end. first. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was one of the really, really important ones. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, like if you started watching the first Harry Potter and somebody was like, hey, Dumbledore dies at the end of this, you'd be like, what? Yeah, you'd be I, very mad. I, 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 I didn't believe it. it. You know what? Like, you know, I was watching Harry Potter memes, and I just watched it. Well, it's not, not in the first movie. And then some oh, guy on the I watched the sick movie before I read the book. There was this video of a guy on the street who was just running around screaming, Dumbledore dies. Dumbledore dies. And like, people were screaming. Oh my god. Dumbledore dies. 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 As Liang spoiled for all of us, but it's okay. I can What'd spoil angle B. 21 point what? Zero four. Do you want me to spoil angle B? What is it? It's 68.96. There you go. Angle B is 68.96. And then guess what? C is. Nine. <laughs> wow. Oh, I thought it was 12. Oh, man, I got so close. <laughs> 12. Man, I thought it was a right angle. <laughs> well. 
do our inverse functions make sense to us? That if we are missing yes. the angle, instead of missing a piece of the ratio, we cannot solve our proportion, so instead we use inverse operations. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Let's work through a couple of these. Solve theta in these situations to make sure we are confident. Okay, I got B. Actually, and in C, you're solving for X. You're not. It's, it's going to make it easy. Again. Oh, I know B. I'm pretty sure what B is, is the hardest of them all. 87. Or 45. I think it's negative 51. Yeah, actually, I think it's 45. I think it's 61. I don't know. Plus 12. Minus 18. Actually, you know what? One kind of like trick is if the two sides you're working with are the sides of your angle. It's going to be cosine. If the two sides you're working with are the sides of your angle, it's going to be cosine. Because notice here, one of these is the side of my angle, but then this one is not. Here, they're both the sides of my angle. I have to use cosine. Uh, adjacent over wait, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 yeah. over 24. The other thing that you can always remember, and I brought this up uh, briefly yesterday, are those ratios that we have ever greater than 1? No, no. Because opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, op what about opposite over adjacent? Could that be greater than 1? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, can our slope ratio? So, cosine and sine never have ratios greater than one. Yeah. Right, so if you're using sine or cosine, double check is my bigger number on the bottom. Now tangents, that's negotiable. Uh, I think I figured out A. Yeah. Inverse yeah. cosine of, well, we could also just type in one half, right? Oh, I was working on C. Same. Sorry, I, I needed some more screen. What do we get for theta in A? You're straight up 60 degrees? That's interesting. That's really clean. So wait, when the leg... That's wrong. You might be agreeing with me. When the leg that we are looking at is half the hypotenuse, we got a perfect 60 degrees. Which means the other angle, right, the base angle, is 30, is 30 degrees. Anyone ever heard of a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Wow. Yes. It's special. For real. Because it has a very particular relationship between the sides. Is this where the factoring is going to be related to this? Trigonometry? No, yeah. this chapter is actually kind of desperate. Desperate, I'm using as a word of like two things that are very far apart from each other. It is um, kind of like, hey, you learned this, now let's learn the exact opposite. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of right. Okay. It is pretty much like that. Thank you, Kim. Awesome. For C, what trig function do we use? Um, we use sine. Sine, right? Sin. Because it's opposite. It is really spelled S I N E. Oh, I know what it's we do. Why don't we just do S I N E? Because you totally need to abbreviate something that just has one more letter. Oh wait, this isn't a this isn't a theta equals. No, it's fifty-seven. So then you divide by seven. Divide by seven. What? No. Divide seven no. by seven. Seven no. divided by six. Yeah. Divide by seven. So you, you divide it by seven. I was close. Yeah, you were. Um, you I divide it. it by seven. No, you 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 divide it by seven. You, you divide seven. There, by yeah. Seven. Like maybe I was just sharing wrong, but I kept hearing divide by seven. What do we get? I, oh, I got eight eight point three five. So yeah, I got the right answer. I just didn't. Because say when we like say divide no, by. No, eight, no, just eight. It's just eight. What? Just eight. eight. Not eight. Not, not, eight. No, eight. not eight. eight. I, I made a mistake. Because why would it be seven and eight? No, 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 not eight. It's eight point three five. Yeah, well, it makes no sense. Because you wouldn't have seven and eight. Good enough. 
Alright, do we think we need to what do anymore? What the heck? How does that make like you? I think we're pretty good. These pillows are way out. Why do they have to? Because pigs can sit on their own Because when the Alright, so moving on to our second lesson for today. When we go to apply trigonometric skills. Wait, are we going to have our next test? I don't know, but they took away a class tomorrow. What? From what I hear, there's probably no math class tomorrow. Why? Why? Because it's easier for the 8th grade schedule. What are we what doing? Are they doing? I don't what are we know, doing instead? I, I don't know. Guys, let's run off and do it. <laughs> let's oh, run dude, off and do it. So, no, real I talk. That, Yosemite, ooh. Um, a blink. You know what a big cliff wall. Is, are they trying so to be like the half this, wall, but like not? Read this. Draw a picture to accompany it. Oh, okay. And I'm going to queue up something I saw okay. and show you how this relates. Hey, David's going to be too busy trying to figure out where she is. And she's just going to drop the road. I saw that. It, it's... Okay, so it's minus three at the end, it's about three feet high. And then the hypotenuse is 30, 48 feet. Um, wait, hold on. Um, he has about 48 feet of Carabiner on your harness. Harness strong loop is right about here. In case this is still a secret, I rock climb. So your carabiner's right here, three feet extra. The triangle made does not add that three feet, so we'll still need to add that three feet at the end. Because it's like a height. Yeah. So from my carabiner to the wall, no, sorry, from my carabiner up to the top point of the rope, it's 48 feet. But that goes up and back down to Emily's harness. Now the rope makes a 55 degree angle. We're 20 feet away from the wall. So this and this is 48, right? Are you serious? I think that's what it says. So here's how. Um, no, why, why do you have to do that? Why can't it just be like the whole top? Why can't, why can't the he has let out 48 feet of rope, which goes up to the carabiner and then back down to the wall. Great. David's waist makes a 55 degree angle with the ground. <laughs> David's 20 feet away. This is solvable. Yeah. This should be the picture that we have well, that's not. on our paper. And then while you flex your brains and try to solve that or or ignore that, I'm going to show you a preview for how this actually relates to things that like people actually do and where we actually use trig. Yeah. How long is the rope? Mathematometry. Math how long? Well, how, so they're asking, like, how long is this? I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay well, we can find X. Let's just find the side we don't know. Just find the side we don't know. Oh, I saw this one. That was... I knew that. Oh, yeah. People know a little bit. This is El Capitan, what they're talking about. I saw this in like really a big photo, and everyone was trying to be funny about referencing this. That wall. Yeah, it's really big. I'll never be content unless I at least put in the effort. Okay. 
cap is the most impressive wall on Earth. It's 3,200 feet of sheer granite. It is the center of the rock climbing universe. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm getting interview questions about Oh, I was on top of like one like of the domes and oh. Yes, for sure. I mean, you probably hiked up half them, which is the backside. Uh, yeah, I hiked. Yeah. I think I hiked half them. You can also yes. hike across four different Because uh, there was that climbing route that goes all the way up. At the I hiked up like two different ones, and it's amazing at the top of it. I'll tell you a funny thing about this. this you, you hang on. And if you fall, you're like. So, Alex Honor is one of the world's top climbers. He set out to free climb, no rope. He broke his foot when his girlfriend accidentally dropped him. Oh, uh, like, the rope slipped through the like she didn't put a knot at the end of the rope. Oh. And when she was belaying him down, they didn't have enough rope. So what I'm trying to get you guys to see is if we don't know how high the climber is, I'll let this play out. One of the best climbers. She got his foot broken because his girlfriend didn't know how high up he was. If you're pushing the edge. <laughs> he talks about that. He says he almost broke up with her. Like he hit the ground, he knew something. He actually broke a vertebrae too at one point. It happened twice. Um, he talks about like he thought about breaking up with her. But then he's like, it's not really her fault. It was an accident that could have happened to anybody. The fact that she's my girlfriend doesn't really matter. If it was a friend of mine, I wouldn't like stop being a friend with them because an accident happened. Um, so here's the deal though. If you don't know how high people are, cry me a river. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Cry me a river. You don't know that song? Nope, it's I just like, heard the expression. I didn't know it was an actual song. Oh yeah, it's like very boy bandy. So, using this, we can figure out the length of the hypotenuse. Yeah. We know two pieces of information. Oh yeah, because don't we know we only have two pieces of information? Trig only uses three, right, in total. And that's one of them we don't know. Yeah, so then we could find out the elements. What side is this related to the angle? Adjacent. Adjacent. If we figure out this, we can figure out this, or we can figure out the whole vertical. So if I want to figure out the hypotenuse length, what function? Uh, oh, it's the 48 length. It's the, um, the, the 48 is the whole cosine, cosine, rope. Cosine. And we're just cosine. trying to figure out that part. We're actually trying to figure out how high she is. Uh, okay. So when she starts coming down, how much more rope will get taken out. So here's what happened. Imagine this is Alex. Okay. This is his girlfriend. Right? She's on belay is what it, okay. it's called. Like, this I, is a true story, guys. She doesn't actually know how much rope has been taken out or how high up he is, but the, the highest clip you clip, you come down from there. So she's belaying, letting rope come through, and you normally put a knot on the end of the rope, so if it hits your belay device, it just stops, and like, oh, hey, you're hang on to the wall, we gotta do something, because there's not enough rope. And the rope just shrek, oh. straight through her belay device. Because like you have your hand kind of loose, because and he just falls. If she didn't notice that there was no more rope, you well, get, you they get go really so casual. fast. When you do this every day, multiple times a day, you get like the okay. most injuries that happen to woodworkers are people that have done it for 10, 20, 30 years. Because they get too casual. Safe. You aren't as safe as you get too comfortable. So what we need to figure out is how high up actually is Emily here to see is it going to be safe to get her down. So we can solve the hypotenuse by using cosine, right? Adjacent hypotenuse. Then we'll know what yeah. that section is. We can solve the total wall height here by using tangent will be the best option even once we have the hypotenuse. So we're going to run one of these with cosine and one of these with tangent. Use tangent first. Use tangent first? Okay. That's what I did. And it's easier for you. Cause, cause you just watch I, 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 I found that it's easier to do tangent just because you're like after you've got the one thing that's straight away able to go. Oh, David, you're having trouble. I'll figure this out. Wait, it's tangent is. Wait. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I did cos. Opposite over adjacent,
Wait. Like, because then we can just do 20, 10, of 55. Yeah. Right? So what do we get from 20, 10, of 55? 20.56. Are you serious? <laughs> Part two. 28. It's 28. 20. We know, we know. We know. Yeah. Yeah. So we multiply both sides. Wait, wait, can we just use the Pythagorean theorem for this one? We already know. If, if we trusted this with 100% accuracy, but we don't, because it's a number that we found. Okay. So a rule to get used to right now is don't use data that we found, use data that was given, because we know if the data at all possible, because we know that data is good. This, if we made a mistake, might be wrong. Right, so now, if we want to figure out the hypotenuse length, I can cosine, because that's using data given to me. So cosine of 55 is what ratio? 20 over x. I'm going to change variables and do h. So that's a very awkward looking h. Okay. Uh, trade places, h is 20 divided by cosine 55. Yeah. So that would be 34.87? 20 divided by, co divided by cosine 55. Yeah. Five? So 35. I'm just round. Right? So if this is 35 rounded, right? We know there's a total of 48 feet of rope let out. That tells us that this segment is how much? Thirteen. Okay. And then twenty and twenty-eight minus. So you probably should like drop from that. Wasn't that just like? So then we said this was twenty-eight and a half. The, the, right, twenty-nine if we went around to make life easy. The, the, the entire thing was twenty-nine and a half. So then minus that thirteen. Minus oh, that was 28 and a half. Yeah. yeah. Then minus 13. Wait, then that's for like about 16. Don't forget, there's also a 3. Oh. So oh, I, I was a bit more specific in my numbers, but I got 18.43. For which, for which question? 18.5. For her total height off the ground. So the, the, the little se the section that we figured out is minus 10. Yeah, now this red section, that's not our 29, is it? I misused this. That 29 is the whole part of the triangle. So 29 minus 13, this region is actually 16, right? If we look at that red region, which now because I fixed it, I'm going to color in the right color. So 48 is the whole rope. We don't really care about that now. 13 is this segment. Right, 16 is this segment, 3 is this segment. So if we talk about how high the carabiner up here is, like where her quick draw, if you want to know what it would be called, you clip in with a quick draw, it has two carabiners on it actually. 13 plus 16 plus 3, 19, 20, 30, 32. Yeah, basic math, did I do it right? 32. So she, right now, not she is 32 feet off the ground, but why do I care about this number? Because that's probably how high she's going up. Okay, so that's, no, that's not how high she is. It's how high the... Well, um, she could keep going, but if she comes down right now, why do I care about that number? Because that's, that's how much the rope is going to be. Hey, hold up! That's how much... What's the minimum length of rope here to get Emily back down safely? That's the question I want to know. The minimum length of rope is is zero. What? You get you do the pumpkin you drop test and you get thirty. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you don't need no rope for that. You can use tape and tape and blue. Yeah. I'm confused by your question. Thirty-five to David. Another thirty-two yeah. from Emily to the ground. So sixty-seven. This rope really needs to be like seventy feet long. Yeah. Right. So, 
That's not even very high, guys. I just, I just did my guess. I just think rock climbing. <laughs> the climbing rope that I was using last week for pumpkin drop, which I'm glad we had better weather for that. You know, guess how many meters long it is um, for situations like this. 30. Where 70. Oh, wow. It's 200 plus feet long. So like if because you're if you're 100 feet up, you need way yeah. more than 200 feet of rope. Yeah. Your belayer is normally not right under the yeah. wall. No. There's like a triangle no, that gets yeah. made. <gasps> I love Pella, it was so much fun. This, and now I'm just teaching climbing because we know trig now. Yeah. This is called a multi-pitch situation where you run out of rope, oh, no. you clip onto the wall, you pull all your rope up, and you start over. So if, and yeah, you do they, it all again. So if she tied a knot, is that what they should have done? Like, uh, she was actually on the ground in that situation. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, yeah. If she had been on the wall, it probably would have been a lot worse. He didn't fall. All, so if you want, watch Free Solo. It's a really interesting documentary of just like pure grit. And just he just wanted to go for it. He set a goal and he did everything he needed to accomplish that goal. Like he's, he's putting his life on the line for fun. I feel like for the thing, like yeah, what? no, it's for like personal challenge. Personal it's challenge. Not like he will talk about. It. He has no interest in dying. He like sees himself being old. He sees himself with kids. I bring this up. I get on a tangent of climbing. Hot tangent. Um, I get on a tangent about climbing, but like really. The goal setting and the do whatever it takes to achieve that, that's pretty impressive. Uh, he is a pro sponsored climber, so obviously this ends up making him money. Um, but to give you perspective of. Oh, he makes money. He's gotta be so scary though. He makes money climbing. Yeah. What? How? So Half Dome at oh, yeah, Yosemite. Half Dome is. Oh. Like to see pictures and kind of appreciate it. It's called Half Dome because look at this. It looks like a half of a dome. Now, I don't when which one I actually went on, when I Alex like climbed, fall to her death. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. Think, I don't think I went on Half Dome, but I went on two different ones, and it was so pretty. So when you look at Half Dome, there are routes set up yeah. for like how can you climb it. Now, the funniest part it's of, kind of the funny whole when you thing. See people climbing half that's dome. Alex Honnold. Sorry, yeah. this isn't the funny part, but that this is a ledge that you literally have to walk across to get over to the next safe climbing. Um, but just to tell you the, the funny anecdote and then get you guys to lunch, he just had shoes, an iPod, headphones, and like his shirt, I think. No, no I actually think he threw his shirt off. Um, and a chalk bag. Well, that's his fault. No, 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 listen. So he gets done with the route, right? Because that's all he wanted with him to, yeah. to climb. You want to be light. You want to be able to move. He gets up, and if you, you will appreciate this, Sammy, because you've been there. There's a rope at the top of Half Dome that yeah. says, do not cross this rope. Okay. He comes up over the, the thing, right, over the wall, walks <laughs> over, comes under the rope, sits down, and, like, he's, like, you know, checking his feet and everything. He's kind of, like, he took his shoes off for a minute. And he's carrying his shoes down the, the path the, that you hiked. Yeah. And these people are like, dude, that guy's hiking barefoot. <laughs> he had just free climbed so the back so side of Half Dome. They... they didn't know. Nobody knew. They didn't make it a thing. Wait, I he died. No, he didn't die. Oh. He made it. Sorry, I just okay. No, he is fine. He he successfully free climbed. He they they thought that was the coolest thing that he was hiking barefoot. He's like, yeah, I just climbed. A, never mind. Like, okay. All right, set goals. Do what you need to achieve so them. Have a great day.